Hi, this is Igor. I'm excited to show you the new Surface Tracker in Resolve version 18 beta that came out last week. It's particularly good for face and beauty work. But before we start, I have two quick announcements. Our Notify is now available for Mac OS as well as Windows. This is the app I wrote that makes it possible to sound off a chime and send out emails when a Resolve render job is complete. You can find out more about this at metafy.com. The second announcement is that I'm also doing a more in-depth look at the Surface Tracker for Mixing Light. Mixing Light is a leading training provider for professional colorists. I will place the link to this video in the description below when ready. On with our tutorial. All right, let's drop this smile clip on the timeline. I will take it to the color page. In the color page, we'll go to the effects and look for the Surface Tracker. So we'll start off with bounds and I will roughly outline the area that we wish to track. And that will be her left cheek here. We'll refine that a little bit here. One thing I found out is that contrast of the plate has a lot of effect on the quality of the track, as one would expect. So I'm just going to do this temporarily for the uh, for the tracker, so it can get a better track. We'll go to the mesh and see how it's automatically created this mesh. Each one of these points will get tracked. If you're tracking particular features, you can position these and you can also add new triangles where you need more resolution. Um, this is kind of a bland uniform area, so I don't think we need to track any particular features there, but I will increase the precision of the mesh. And not only that, I will also on the track page, go to better quality because I have discovered that faster, while it's fast, it's also a little bit loose when you're trying to do these uh, precise things like on the face, for example. So let's hit track. And if I zoom in, you'll see that we're following the deformation of the face surface pretty well. At this point, I can press Control-D to disable this node. We don't really need that contrast anymore. So now, what do we do with the surface tracker? We have the track, but we need to, we're need we going to comp something on top. So I have that bruise and a scrape that I uh, painted in Photoshop. Let's bring that in. Uh, we can go to the media pool, and let's start off with the scrape. The RGB green connection will go to green, and the uh, matte will go to the blue. Let's push play. Not bad, right? But we'll do a few more things. So we also have the bruise layer, which we'll place underneath the scrapes. So actually, I will add another surface tracker here. This is still in beta. I'm not sure how it's going to pan out. Some of the things in the actual tool are, um, seem to be a little wonky or not fully worked out. But um, one thing it's missing right now is there doesn't seem to be a way to copy and paste this node onto another node or copy the mesh or the track, but I need this track on this other node that we'll use for the bruise. So I'll unfortunately have to do another one from scratch. So I'll just go back to the first frame and just draw a quick bound. You just need to be big enough to fit that bruise. I could track the whole face, but there's really no reason for that in this case. We'll go Control D enable the contrast. Let's give it a little more precision and go better and track. I will disable the um, scrape for now. Let's pipe this into here. On the result page, we can hide our mesh so we don't see that stuff. And there are also standard blend modes here. So I'm going to switch this to overlay and uh, pull it down a little bit. Uh, let's disable the contrast thing. Okay, that's good. We see some hard edges from our bound and that's easy to fix with softness and expand and, and contract. There you go. So if we enable and disable that, we see our bruise. Let's see how it tracks. Pretty good. Uh, maybe let's make it a little more pronounced, cool. And now we can enable the scrape. I will hide the mesh on the scrape too. And let's pull back on the opacity of the scrape a little bit. It seems too contrasty for this 
kind of blown out image. Cool. And there it is. That's not too bad for a couple of minutes of work. It would be really nice if Surface Tracker were available in Fusion. At the moment, it's not. I'm not sure what Blackmagic's plans are about that, but um, you can still generate things in Fusion and comp it over in the color page. Let me show you how that works. So let's go out to the edit page. I'll hold the Alt key to make a duplicate of that clip. We'll go back to the color page and delete. Maybe we don't need that and we don't need this and we definitely don't need this. Uh, I'm just keeping the track that we have already done. Now we'll go to the Fusion page. This loader represents the clip that we had in the color page. Let's add a paint. So drag it over there. We'll paint something on her face. We don't have to do it in this general area because we can position our element later in the color page, but I'll, but I'll do it here anyway. Let's say she's a Dodgers fan. Now, if I go back to the color page and uh, go to result, you will see that this is not tracking. What we need to do is I'll press control space, get a background and hold shift to break away the paint node connected to the background. And then control space again, media out, we'll create another media out. This is a standard way how you take fusion elements into the color page. Let's drag it to the viewer. If I press A, you'll see the alpha is fully opaque, which is not what we want, but that's because the background has alpha all the way up to one. So now we have the alpha and we have the RGB fill. And this is going into media out too, which will be available in the color page if I right click and add source. We'll just connect that source to the RGB and alpha inputs here. Of course, this needs to be connected to the output and there it is and it's tracking now let's just refine it a little bit maybe we'll do multiply we can also position this and scale it up a little although it's going to be a little bit before we upgrade to version 18 i have already used the surface tracker on a shot for a trailer where i had to uh, clean up blood on the nose for the mpa and uh, it worked out really really well it saved a ton of time so i'm very excited about using this tool and i'll show you more of the beauty stuff in the upcoming mixing light insight thank you for watching